So after talking about how to write tests, let's stop for a while and get a bit philosophical what to test, what tests to write. Because number one reason I see that people don't write tests is time. So it takes a lot of time to reach so-called good code coverage. Here's the Wikipedia page and I will get to that in a minute. So people don't have time to write tests, which is ironical because then they need to spend more time with each new feature testing manually, debugging manually, and fixing bugs that would be otherwise caught by automated testing. So in the long run, the argument we don't have time doesn't make any logical sense. Unless your project is personal with no users and not many features upcoming, or unless you want to risk and let your customers do all the testing for you, report bugs, and then you fix the bugs when they come, from users and not from your application testing. With that in mind, I will assume that if you are watching this course, you want to do testing and your goal is to maybe write as many tests as possible, but hold on for a minute, it's not the goal. Historically, this thing as code coverage was really important and was emphasized by everyone that you need to achieve 100% code coverage or test coverage, it's the same thing. And this is not about Laravel or PHP, it's a general Wikipedia article. So what is code coverage? Theoretical Wikipedia definition is percentage, which source code is executed when test suite is run. What does it mean in practice? I've Googled and found two examples. One of the articles is from Anwar, generate code coverage report in Laravel with xdebug. So you launch the tests with test coverage and it generates which of those methods, how many of those methods in the controller, for example, were actually executed during the test being run. So this is the controller and then there's a test file doing similar things that we've done previously in this course, factory acting as get JSON, this is API testing, and then the feature test doesn't call the controller directly, but the controller method is executed along the way and then it is calculated as covered by test, executed during testing. And then you will get something like this, so coverage 0% of some controllers and coverage of like 35 or more percent of other controllers. Profile controller, for example, is 100% covered by tests. Another example is pretty recent from Laracasts in Laravel 9, you have PHP Artisan test dash dash coverage and with xdebug under the hood and you need to configure that, you would get really similar report, how many percentage points for each of the controller or each of the files. So some files are covered 100% because they are covered by Laravel framework itself probably, and some of them are zero. For example, default user model and post policy, for example, are not covered at all because methods inside of them are not called during the default testing. So this is the code coverage, the test coverage in definition. Now, do you want to achieve 100% test coverage? Not necessarily. Point number one against the 100% test coverage is even if you have 100% test coverage, it doesn't guarantee that you are testing right things. It guarantees that the sum method will be called and executed and will run during testing. But whether the assertions are the right ones, whether the method was called with right parameters and everything, that is totally personal, totally up to you, and that code coverage report will not really prove that your test suite is good. It will just prove the amount of tests. So if your goal is that, the amount of tests, the number of tests to impress your boss or impress someone that you have 100% test coverage, good. It's better than nothing. But generally, I would have another goal in mind to test the most important parts, the most crucial parts, and the most risky parts first. Then, even if you don't have 100% code coverage, and that shouldn't be the goal, in my opinion, you would have your most important features covered. And that is a better goal. You could get a better night's sleep knowing that the crucial parts are covered. And the best quote I know about that is from Matt Stauffer. Here's my article on LaravelDaily.com. He was talking at the conference about Laravel and Enterprise back in 2018. And one of the quotes that he said from the stage, I was in the audience listening to that live, write tests. And if you don't know exactly what to test, here's a rule of thumb. Search for the function which can make you lose your job if it breaks. Test that first. 
if we go back to our products test to our small demo project with that thing in mind what would be the most important features the crucial features that if they break someone would potentially lose their job for example or have really big financial loss for example you have a project of managing products and what if the whole page is down the whole website is down which means the project is not working so the home page would not return status to 100 with success and interestingly enough we don't have that covered by tests so i was so focused on testing the products that i didn't cover kind of forgot to test the main routes so routes web in our case should redirect to login so that should be covered that it doesn't throw any errors the home page another probably crucial part of that of the project the table may be with errors and it wouldn't affect that much the pagination is not that crucial the admin permission is pretty crucial what if someone can get access to your managing of the product and would make some changes for you or delete some products or something like that so that is crucial so authorization access and authentication access should be tested probably one of the first in line and also not covered in that project but anything related to payments or transactions or something like that that if that fails someone would get financial loss or even legal issues related to money so in general my opinion is that there are three things that you need to test first first test that the main pages load successfully so 200 status for home page or whatever amount of pages you feel that are really important or the main api that there are no 500 errors or something like that then second anything related to authentication and authorization so no access would be given to someone who shouldn't have access and then third anything related to payments but speaking about payments let's go to the next separate video and talk about testing for packages